Hi, it's Miriam Berlin from Accepted, and I want to welcome you to the MBA Essay Editing Funnel webinar with Linda Abraham. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use Accepted's unique essay editing funnel method to ensure your essays portray you at your best. Now, we've received some great questions and comments from you on your top MBA admission concerns. Many of them were about the essays, which hopefully we'll be answering in the next hour. But if you still have additional questions, don't worry. We have set aside time, as usual, at the end of the presentation. So at any point, you can just put any questions that you have into the question window, and we'll review them at the end of the webinar. Now, a bit about our presenter. Linda Abraham is the founder and president of Accepted. Since 1994, she's advised thousands of applicants to top MBA programs and has lectured and written extens extensively, including the best-selling MBA Admission for Smarties. And of course, she's read and edited tens of thousands of essays, including the good, the bad, and the, well, downright awful. Linda also received her MBA from the UCLA Anderson School of Management. And now, introducing today's webinar, the MBA Essay Editing Funnel with Linda Abraham. Thank you very much, Miriam, and thank you very much to all the attendees for, for joining me today. Um, I like to start my webinars by getting to know a little bit about you before we get going. I see there is an excellent question posed by Sam, and I, I would like to address it at the end of the webinar, but please do post it again then. In the meantime, what I'd like to do is get some sense of where geographically you're at. So if you could just, in the question window, write where physically you're located, city um, and country, if the city won't make that obvious. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, welcome. Where else? Iran, Tehran, whoa, welcome. Hartford, Connecticut, Greece. Anybody else want to share where you're located? We have a lot more people here. Minneapolis, Washington, D.C., Toronto, I'm in Los Angeles, Bangalore, Bangalore, Calgary. Two Canadians, pretty good. Okay, the next question I have for you is actually a poll that Miriam's going to post. Because I also want to know not only where you're at geographically, and as I anticipated, it's a fairly international crowd, I'd like to know where you're at in terms of the application process. So you have four options displaying on your screen now. You're planning to apply in the next six weeks. You're planning to apply in January. You're planning to apply both in the next six weeks and in January, and neither one. Can you please indicate which um, best describes you? And I think there's a... I, one person put B, planning to apply in January. Okay, Tarun, thank you very much. Let's give it a few more seconds. Five. Oh, can we get a little higher voting here? We got 58%. Let's get it up. Five, four, three, two, one. Still stuck at 58%. Okay, we're going to close the poll now. 27% of you are planning to apply in the next six weeks, 33% planning to apply in January, 20% both, which means that most, more than just about half of you actually are planning to send in at least some applications for this round, and some of you are planning ahead for January submissions, 20% neither, so I guess 20% of you are really, really planning ahead um, and planning perhaps for a later application. All right, that's good to know. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, your sharing. Um, and somebody else added next six weeks, and the two people said they couldn't couldn't vote, but uh, next six weeks, and somebody else said just in Jan and both. All right, so most of you clearly are planning to apply very soon. I'm assuming that you're either feverishly writing essays or already have drafts written. And here at Exhibit.com, we review lots and lots of essays. As Miriam mentioned, we see great essays, we see terrible essays and the majority are in between. It's our job to turn the terrible ones into, if not great, at least good, and the so-so ones into great. And sometimes even to improve those that are already really, really good or even great. I'm going to tell you right now the secrets of our editing process. My assumption as I give this webinar, by the way, is not to tell you how to write essays. That's the subject of other webinars. You could look at the Essays That Stick webinar on Accepted, and I'll give you a URL where later at the end 
where you can get access to these webinars or other resources, non-webinar resources. Um, Bold and Brilliant Essays will also tell you how to write essays. And um, I gave two webinars earlier this summer about the Harvard and Stanford applications. And they don't go specifically into how to write great essays, but there's a lot of information there that would be relevant in approaching any application from scratch. Again, my assumption for the rest of the, rest of the webinar is that you have drafts. And this webinar is really about reviewing and checking your essays to make sure that they accomplish the purpose of the MBA application essays. Now, before we go any further, I want to ask you, what do you think is the purpose of these essays? Why do schools have you write essays, at least those schools that do? And in your question window, can you please tell me how you would answer that question? Nobody has an answer to that question. You've all have been writing essays or are planning to write essays and you have no idea what they're supposed to do? Come on. They want to know you better. Right, Margaret. That is definitely one of the purposes behind the, the, the essays. Anybody else? Planning. Planning to write one. Okay. The question is, what is the purpose of the essays? Why are you asked to write them? Getting to know you, evaluating communication skills. Excellent, Nikki. The only way for expressing yourself in front of the ad com, that's definitely part of it. It's more personalized versions, something more than your resume. Excellent, Sam. Get insight on various aspects of your life but on the application. AJ, you're all hitting on elements of the, of the purpose. Thank you. I really appreciate your appreciation. The per essays have a threefold purpose. This is the first of, first threesome, of the three threesomes in this, in this webinar. The essays have a threefold purpose, and you can rem remember them if you remember the acronym PAD, P-A-D. I'm not saying padding. Some people erroneously believe that the essays are mere padding for grades and test scores. It's not true. They serve a uh, an important function. One, they provide a window into the real you, into you as an individual, as a human being, as a personality with character, with dreams, motivations maybe even a few flaws. That's one of their purposes. Two, they add value to the other elements of the application. As many of you said, I, I think each one of you in your responses got one or two elements of the three, but it's really all three. You want your essays to add to the reader's knowledge of you. They're an introduction. They're one, they're, the whole application is an introduction, but the essays have to add more. And we'll get into what is the more. More depth, more character, more motivation, more color. And I don't mean skin color. Demonstrate communication skill is a D, P-A-D. Provide a window into the real you, add value to your application, and demonstrate your communications skills. Those are the three purposes of your essays. And if you're going to proof your application, or in accepted.com terms, put them through the MBA essay editing funnel, you have to make sure that the essays are accomplishing all three purposes. That is the point of a good, critical edit and review. Bad, poorly written essays that fail to accomplish this threefold mission, all three elements of this mission, fail you. And to accomplish the, the goal of the essays and to check them appropriately, what we do is, again, we put them through the three stages, the three levels of the MBA essay editing funnel to ensure that you achieve all three purposes of the essays. And there are three ins or three levels of this MBA essay editing funnel. The first one is in context. You want to evaluate each essay in the context of the entire application. And again, the key question is, does the essay add the reader's knowledge of you as a human being? Does it introduce a dimension of you not obvious from the boxes, your transcript, the other essays, and your resume? Because if it doesn't, it's really failing you. And you can, it's, and this is one that is, I think, hard to fix through editing, through revision. It sometimes requires a rewrite. And if you, if you either get feedback or you read the essay and you don't feel that it is personally revealing, 
then you, it is time to consider a rewrite. Now, do the essays as a whole, not each one, but as a whole, especially when you're writing multiple essays, do they introduce you, a real person with real motivations, with personality, to the reader? I have read so many essays, I have adult children, and over the years, it happens many times, that either my friend's children or my children's friends come to me and they say, can you please review my essay, or they'll work with us. And um, here I, I'll have sitting next to me somebody that I know really well, and maybe I've known them since early childhood. And I read the essay, and they are entirely absent from the essay. It's like they've hidden themselves in the essay, or from the essay. That's not good. That's not what you want. You want the person to read the essay to come away and feel like they've met somebody. Also, do the essays complement each other? Your essays should not be, unless they're specifically asking about work, and almost all schools that have multiple questions give you room to, to address both the professional and the non-professional side of you. Do they reveal other interests? Do they real, reveal what you're really, really interested in, what you're passionate about? Do they go into depth that your resume could not go into? Do they discuss, you might discuss in your resume or your job history, certain achievements? But you couldn't go into any detail. You couldn't provide some of the challenges that you face, some of the interpersonal difficulties, some of the tech, not, well, technical difficulties you want to stay away from, some of the interpersonal difficulties, perhaps market challenges, business, business challenges that you overcame. That's where the essays and text come in. Now, again, think about that threefold purpose, PAD. Provide a window into the real world, the real you, rather. That's this stage add value, that's this stage. Now let's look at a sample essay. I realize that um, it's not that easy to imagine what this essay, um, what this writer, kind of how it complements, how it works on this level because you don't have the other elements. But Let's just take a minute, read it. I'm going to read out loud the, um, the fourth paragraph. And you can take a minute more to, to read it to yourself. I have become very interested in the field of information technology over the past several years. Doors will open to people like myself as the internet, PC, software, telecommunications, and cable television industries converge. And I realize this is several years old. You could write now social media and mobile, and it would be the same. I feel extremely optimistic about the prospects of these markets because of the increasing stream of new products and ideas flowing into the marketplace. These companies need both financing assistance and management expertise to be successful. The favorable market conditions and the exponential growth of Internet technology indicate that this trend will not only continue, but most likely will accelerate. My experience in making quick changes to adapt to fluid client expectations and general market demands will prove invaluable to my success in this field. The four years I've spent, and the fast place, client-focused, commercial construction industry has prepared me for success in this exciting new venture. Now, I've got to ask you, are you meeting anybody in that? Anybody feel like they're meeting somebody, certainly somebody likable? Would you? No, I don't either. I don't. I don't think you're meeting anything. I think it's full of generalities and superficialities. And we're going to go more into that a little bit later, and I'll come back to this essay. But that's not how you want to come across. You're not, I can't imagine this adding value to boxes and a resume. It's just basically repeating on a, almost on a more superficial level. Construction industry and IT, it's too general. You're 100% right. Mike, it's too generic. You're 100% right. If he wanted to say he's, he feels that there's something valuable in this construction industry and relevant to IT, why does he tell us what it is? That could be an interesting essay. Exactly. Kevin, you're 100% right. It sounds like he's telling me more about the industry than providing any personal touch. 100%. 100% right. And plus, what he's telling you about the industry is probably was so commonly known at the time, it's not even terribly informative. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to the second in 
and the middle of the funnel. You want to assess each essay on its own. And in this level of the funnel, you're really going to co combine all three aspects of PAD. Your first question as you're assessing your es the essay on its own, and again, your goal here is to look at it and say, is this a coherent, compelling piece of writing on its own without the rest of the application? Does it answer all elements of the question posed? If not, you have to edit it to make sure you have to add in the missing element and relate it to the core theme of the essay. Frequently, you're going to have a what and a why question. Probably the most famous one is what matters to you most and why, which is Stanford's question. Other examples of this are Ross, what career do you plan to pursue after business school and why? For Kellogg's, what career role are you planning to pursue and why? And when answering the why, please, 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 don't give what you think they want to hear. Say the why. You risk far more by being generic, as the previous example hopefully showed you, than by really, really saying what motivates you. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Years ago, I was working with an applicant who had a summer internship at one of the national party headquarters. I think it was even... It was before a it was during a convention year, so it was an election year. I can't remember if it was the Democratic or the Republican Party. And he wrote an essay, and in that essay he had that he got this internship and he was honored to get the internship, and that it was an interesting and challenging experience. Move on to the next topic. So I wrote him, I called him up rather, and I said to him, you know, you you had this passage in your essay. And he says, Yes. And I said, Well, you told me that it was interesting and challenging. Can you please tell me something I didn't know about it and I wasn't even there? And he was taken aback by my comment. And, uh, he's, and I said, well, he said, I, I absolutely hated the experience. I said, why did you hate it? He said, you know, before I did had this internship, I was thinking of going into politics and government work. And the backbiting and the politics within the organization so turned me off that I don't want to do it anymore. I said, well, tone down the negativity a little bit, but basically you want to convey that message because it's far more interesting and revealing than what you actually wrote. Ultimately he did, he was accepted, it all worked out well. But you don't, again, as in the example I showed or the story I just told, you risk so much more by being generic than by really answering the question with your, your true motivations and your true reasons. Now sometimes an essay will have multiple parts as I indicated before. NYU Stern's essay one is a good example of this. Why pursue an MBA degree at this point in your life? What actions have you taken to determine that Stern is the best fit for your MBA experience? And what do you see yourself doing professionally upon graduation? Um, hmm. So this is a goals essay with a twist, and you are going to want to um, answer each element and tie them together. This is, you know, what, why do you want an MBA now, and how is Stern going to help you best achieve, reach that point? How is Stern going to be the bridge between where you are now and where you want to, to be, end up, and how do you know it? What actions have you taken to research Stern and its program? Why do you think it's the best fit? So again, you're going to want to make sure that each element is answered. If it's not, during your check, you're going to want to add it in. Every essay has to have a core idea or theme. Now, the theme does not have to be verbatim in the essay, but it has to guide you both in terms of answering the full question, what to include in your essay, and clarifying the point for your reader. If the reader walks away kind of scratching the head, what was that essay all about? Kind of like my sample before. Then it's in my view, it's a rewrite. Um, you could have a theme like, I want to go to Stern because I want to take advantage of, I want to go into investment banking. It has its Wall Street, it's near Wall Street, it has practitioners uh, teaching in the school, it has 
you know, its labs, and um, and I've talked to the current students A and B, and they convinced me it's the best place given my background in um, accounting and and uh, financial advising to take the next step and move into investment banking. I mean, you, obviously you have to uh, build it out a little bit more. Um, but the point would be, I want to go to Stern because of A, B, C, and D, or A, B, and C, given, you know, again, limits here. Second thing you want to check in this middle, or the next thing you want to check in this middle level is, is the essay logically constructed? Is, does it flow? Can people follow it? If um, you can have different forms of structure, probably the most common is a chronological structure, where you just tell a story as it happened. But you may organize essays thematically. In other words, you could have an essay organi organized around the impact your participation in sports activities have had on you, or how different leadership experiences have taught you that good listening is a critical element in leadership, and you could draw from um, sports, the arts, community service, sorority, you know, whatever it was, but you could have something organized more thematically than chronologically, or you could combine the two. So frequently structural problems, if you read an essay and you think, you know, I'm, I'm making the points, but it doesn't really flow, usually these pro kinds of problems can be easily fixed just by reordering mater more material in a more logical way, perhaps making it more chronological, or especially in a thematic essay, using, making better use of transitions between paragraphs so that people can see you're still talking about the same topic or that the, the topics in the different paragraphs are related through your theme. Occasionally, essays are so structurally flawed that you have to start over, but again, when you're talking about these kinds of issues, they usually can be fixed. And then what I've been hinting at kind of all along and what some of you caught in terms of the, um, the sample essay I posted earlier is are there any examples in the essay to make it distinctive? And here we're getting, again, getting back to providing a window into the real you and adding value to your application. Remember, business schools value diversity. If you blend into the gray squares, you're not adding to the diversity of the school. You really are not showing that you have something special and distinctive to bring to your class. So you want to use examples as well as honest answers to the why questions to show that you have the experience that you can bring to bear into class discussion. Now, let's look again at that essay sample. Do you see any examples in this thing? Um, again, I'm going to read you, in this case, paragraph two. I was fortunate enough this summer to speak candidly with a local top school alum who shared with me his experience in the program. Although he focused on a different area of management than I intend to, we shared a similar perspective on the MBA experience. It was refreshing to speak with someone who was deeply involved in the top school curriculum, who wholeheartedly endorsed the program to me based on my background expectations of the grad, um, background expectations of the graduate business school experience and career goals. Like him, I don't want to be pigeonholed into a narrow, fo narrowly focused technical management career as I am now. Although I am responsible for the productivity and safety of 100 to 150 people on large commercial construction projects projects, which is very fulfilling. My duties are still quite narrow in scope. I want to move into management, which may not happen on my current path. Top school will give me the breadth of knowledge that I need to be successful as a manager. The inside information I've acquired from students and alumni enhance my confidence that the program will provide the elements that I consider essential to a successful and well-rounded MBA experience. Again, do you know what is attracting this fellow to this school? Anybody? In the question window. Anybody know what's attracting this guy to school? It's very generic. There are no examples. What if he were to give a few examples about the perspective or the education that he's really interested in? What if he said um, what kind of management path he wants? Um, what inside information has he acquired? He just wants to be in a top school. Exactly, Tarun. You're right. You're right. It's so generic, it could apply to almost any program, any top program. And he doesn't say what was shared with the top school alum. 
Now he could, he, in the original essay, he might have mentioned the name. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I think he did. I, I changed it for confidentiality reasons. But there's nothing specific here. What if, what if he said instead he provided some examples of programs at the specific school that supported his desire, his, his intended career path? What if he knew what his career path was? was or his intended career path was? There's just way too, uh, too generic. But if he were to, other than saying he worked on large commercial construction projects managing 100, 150 people, that's the one specific and solid element in this, which is good. But what if he told us about one construction project and what challenges he faced? You'd have a story. You'd see, some, you'd see him handling challenges. You'd see him in a leadership role. Here you just see him name dropping or without a name. Again, specifics count. Specifics support your theme, add interest to your essay, and reveal something distinctive and interesting about you. They help to distinguish you from your competition. Do you feel like you're meeting someone here that you'd like to get to know? Nope, I certainly don't. If anything, I find him to be rather arrogant, which um, is not a desirable quality. No. All right, so that's the middle of the funnel. That's individually, looking at the essay individually. And now for the bottom of the funnel, in detail. You want to examine line by line the essay. And this is what most people think of as proofing an essay you see that it's just one part of proofing your essay. The, two, the first two ends are not what most people think of. They only think of in detail, writing mechanics, grammar, spelling, etc. And I hope I've made the case, I hope I've made the case that you really need to check all three levels. Now, I want to ask you, and again I'd like you to answer in the question window, why do you think this level is important? After all, if you've added value, if you've provided a window into the real you, why is it important that it be well written? Juvesh says to convey a theme. Okay, that's, that's part of it, to clarify your writing. I'll, I'll give you that one. To show applicant attention to detail is key for someone wanting to go to B, B school. Good, Kevin. Shows professional, professionalism. Good, Tao. I apologize if I, if I mispronounce anybody's name keeps reader interested. Well, people tend to get frustrated if something is very sloppily written. Ties it all together. Okay. Proof that you can communicate in business school. Exactly, Christian. Exactly. Okay. Well, if you have lots and lots and lots of errors in your essays, you are going to come across as sloppy. And that's not the impression you're trying to convey in your application. You want to come through across as a thoughtful professional. Now, you also want to come through as somebody who knows how to write. Again, you want to demonstrate your communication skill, specifically your writing ability. Now, one or two typos won't sync your application. But when you start having a lot of them, and what exactly is a lot will probably vary from school to school and person to person. But if you're talking about one or two typos per essay, especially if you have multiple essays, then I think you're getting into the sloppy area. may not be quite as bad as the picture, but you get the idea. And you would definitely call into question your communications and writing ability. Now, I, I know that many people in the webinar, um, for, there are many people here for whom English is a second language, and schools will cut non-native English speakers some slack. But they still want to see that you have the ability to communicate, to participate in class, and to do the work. So again, if you have a lot of these writing mistakes, writing mechanical errors, then your essays are not doing their job. However, these are the kinds of errors that are almost always fixable. So you want to check your essays for clarity, grammar, word usage, style, sentence structure, punctuation, spelling, 
all the above to make sure that the details are supporting your message and conveying the kind of impression of you that you want to be making. However, it's hard. You've already written, rewritten, drafted, redrafted, checked the first two levels of the essay. How are you going to, to have any objectivity, be a, a critical, have a critical eye when you're looking at it one more time? I'll tell you how. You're going to, and this is the last of my threesomes, you're going to use the three A's of a good edit. The first A is a break. Take a break. Let your essay age like fine wine. If possible, give it a couple of days before you do this last check. If you don't have a couple of days, give it overnight. If you don't have overnight, give it a couple of hours. If you don't have a couple of hours, then just step away, take a coffee break, go walk around the block, anything. Get away from the essay for a few minutes. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to print it out. Do not proof from the screen. Really, really, really bad idea. You will definitely miss things. And when you print it out, print it out and double or triple space it so that you have room on your paper to make notes. And finally, when you're proofing it for this stage, go to a different location, physically a different location. If you have a desk where you normally work, then go to the kitchen table, go to Starbucks, go to the, go to the couch, go to a recliner move your location and take the paper with you along with a pen and paper and then uh, along a pen or pencil and then read it aloud because your ear will catch all kinds of things that your eye misses. Read it slowly, paying attention to the punctuation, the spelling, and just how it sounds. Again, you will have dealt with the larger macro issues in the first two checks. Now you're really looking for, for micro kinds of issues. Make notes as you're reading. If you have ideas how you can clarify or fix, then make them right, right there. Circle things that just don't sound right and you want to come back to. But this kind of a process really, really helps in restoring that, that critical objectivity when you've you know, read something a thousand times already. Let's just go over the three A's of a good edit really quickly. A break, a printout, a loud. What about spell check? I'm sure some of you are going to be wondering that one. Well, use it, but don't rely on it blindly because it's going to, uh, it misses things. So let's look at this. The view was striking, both the lush green forest and the deprivation I saw. What is wrong with that sentence? What word is mis misspelled in that sentence, which spell check did not catch? Deprivation. You're right, Marianne. Deprivation with an I means poverty. Deprivation with an A means immorality, evil. Normally, I think depravity would be the more commonly used word, but deprivation is a word, and um, it's wrong. Okay, next one. I strove, I strove to exercise my mind through research. Exercise. Lester, you got it. I've got to tell you, yeah, many of you are giving this one. I think it was my client that did this one, and I happened to be drinking something when I read it the first time, and I remember um, spilling what I was, what I, just, just you know, anyway, it was kind of messy. But it was very funny. This is not the kind of humor you want in your essays. And this is exactly what spell check will miss. Yes, you guys, are, you're, you're all getting it. Exercise is wrong. It should be exercise. E-X-E-R-C-I-S-E -E -E is, is uh, what you do at the gym. Exercise, E-X-O-R, is to remove, to rip out, um, usually re referencing spirits and ghosts and things like that, and probably made famous by the horrible movie from about 30 years, old, years ago, The Exorcist. All right, now. Let's review, and I'm going to give away, I'm going to give $30 off. Miriam, I hope you're going to take notes uh, as to who are the winners here. I'm going to give $30 off to any of the winners.
Sorry about that. I knocked down my mic. I'm going to give $30 off to any of the winner, winners on, of this um, next question. So have your um, fingers po posed on the keyboard and then put the entire answer into one square. Okay? The question is, what is the threefold purpose of your essays? Okay, what does PAD stand for? Not just the acronym, what does it stand for? I want all three in one window. Okay, Marianne, you got it. Provide a window into the real you, add value, and demonstrate communications ability. Marianne, you got it. Um, and I'm writing down your name. Your next order at accepted.com, we will process a $30 refund. Okay? All right. Let's review the, the threefold purpose. Provide a window into the real you. Add to the other elements of the application and demonstrate your communications ability. What are, and again, I will give $3 off the next order to any winner. What are the three ends of the MBA essay editing funnel? All in one window, please. Try again. No, not the three A's, the three N's of the MBA essay editing fu funnel. Nobody? Okay. Bavia, you got it. In context, in itself, in detail. I said individually, but I'll take in itself. That's what it means. Okay. So, um... You know, AJ, I saw yours jumped up top. Okay, AJ and Bobby, you both got it. I don't know how that happened, but Sha and yeah. Okay, good. Again, the three steps you need to go through, the three checks that you should perform on your essays are evaluate your essays in context. The context is your application. Are they adding to the reader's knowledge of you? Okay, that's clear, clear here. Are they providing that window into you that the boxes and the resume can't do? Next, individually, in the middle of the funnel, does the essay stand on its own two feet? Is it a coherent piece of writing? Does it convey a clear message? That's individually. And all elements of PAD come into play here. Is there a clear theme, a logical structure? Does it answer the question in its entirety? And have, made you, made, have you made use, effective use of examples to support your main theme, to add interest to your essay, and to distinguish you from your competition? And then the last one is bottom of the funnel. In detail. Examine your essay in detail. This is the nitty-gritty of writing. This is what most people commonly associate with proofing and checking, editing. And it's all about demonstrating communication skill. So you're going to check your essay for clarity, grammar, word usage, punctuation, spelling, style, all, all the stuff that people typically don't want to have to do that really makes the difference between an OK essay and a great one. And then the last question I'm going to ask you is what are the three A's of proofing? And again, $3 off the next order for the winner. Okay, Vesalios, you got it. A break, a print allowed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, Tarun actually, wow, this is, this is weird. All right, I'm going to give it to, to Tarun, to Sam, and to Vesalios, because I said Vesalios' name, and then two people jumped up in front of him, so I don't know how that happened. But, um... Tarun. Uh, Miriam, I hope you're writing down these names. And 
Okay, now let's just re review that. And you're right, you want to give your essays a break. Step away from them, at least, hopefully a little bit more than that. You want to print them out, and you want to read them aloud. Now, I've given you a lot of information here. There's a lot, lot more, both on writing and on editing the essays on the website. There's also quite a bit in my book. The second half of the book really is devoted to the application, um, the essays, letters of recommendation, interviews, etc. You're very welcome. Um, and you're welcome to order it. It's available in paperback, paperback, it's available in Kindle. It's also available at all Amazon bookstores around the world. And it's not expensive. So take take advantage of that. And it's it's gotten great reviews. In terms of free, we have MBA essay tips and resources. We've also just um, redesigned our site. It's much more easily navigable whether you're on your desktop, and we've also made it much more easy for people from mobile phone or tablets to, to get around on the site. So please check it out, and check out specifically our MBA essay editing resources, which are at, or MBA essay resources, which are at the URL on the screen right now. Um, there's material on common topics, the, the webinars I referenced earlier on how to structure essays if you're not yet in the editing phases. There, as you can see on the screen, there's more articles and resources on just editing your essays. So this is, most of this stuff is either free or very inexpensive. And, and overwhelmingly, I think it's free. However, we are obviously not in business to, to just give away stuff. <laughs> we also do provide MBA essay editing along with admissions consulting. And we have been in business for over 20 years. I think that's testimony to our success. Um, as well as the individual testimonials that we have on the site, which are frankly a fraction of the positive feedback that we've received. You have a small sample on the screen in front of you now. Yes, I've given you, I've told you what to do, but there is still something to be said for having somebody else review and edit your essays. Uh, there's a reason that professional writers have professional editors, and um, they obviously know how to write very, very well. I don't and I, I think the same is true of amateur writers. So I would really encourage you to consider having your essays, your applications, uh, at least critiqued on a high level. Um, and better it would be to have them critiqued and edited. Let Accepted.com help you produce the, the gems. Now at this point in time, I want to um, thank you very much for attending. I also want to take your questions. So let me ex expand my window again and um, we can start taking questions. Remember, Sam, you had a question that I definitely wanted to deal with. I hope you'll post it again. And Let me get myself organized here. OK. Is it always a plus point, this is Sam's question, to make an essay personalized to a particular B school? Is it mandatory or does it just give incentive to get accepted? Well, first of all, I would say that anything that gives you an advantage in the process is, is pretty much mandatory. Um, but I can't emphasize enough that your essays should be personalized for the particular schools. Definitely, yes. There are very few times where I would recommend just copying and pasting an essay from one school to another one. I, I, it would be a very, it would be a very specific situation. Um, so yes, you should definitely be personalizing them. You should do the research on the schools so that you understand the differences between the schools and your reasons for choosing particular schools. And your essays should reflect both the culture of the schools and um, the values of the school and your reasons for going, choosing that particular school. And you may have different reasons for different, different programs. Again, for an, an example of how you personalize your essays, or I don't know if personalize isn't even the right word, make your essays specific to individual programs or approach different applications, I would refer you to the webinars I get, did. And I know time is running short, and webinars by their nature are not. 
I'm not short, um, the webinar I did for Stanford <coughs> and Harvard's application because so many people think of them almost as Tweedledee and Tweedledum and they're not. And I think that there certainly is overlap between the two programs, but I think if you attended those webinars you'd see that you need a, a, a different approach. Vincent asks, what do you think about exaggerating a bit about our experiences to make it look more challenging and more important? Don't do it. Be factual. Be honest. Um, exaggerating a li little bit tends to lead one down a really, really dangerous and very slippery path. You certainly don't have to hide achievement, um, but you don't want to exaggerate. Let's, let's put it that way. Be factual. Let's see. Um, Lester asks a very interesting question. Is it viewed badly if an LOR or essay doesn't make use of a loud maximum number of words? If you're, you know, if you're talking about 20, 10, 20 words, no, not at all. You probably would be a relief to the reader. And I certainly would never advocate you providing filler copy. But if you're taking half the space of what's offered, I would really wonder if you're providing the examples that would be the meat of your essay. If there isn't, I would, I would have to see it. So, you know, don't feel like you have to come within, you know, five words of whatever the word limit is. Don't feel compelled to or required to. But if you're at half the words, then my guess is that you are answering superficially. You're not providing examples or you're missing part of the question. That would, that would cause me alarm and I'd have to really see the essay. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Sam asks, writing your own letter recommendation because the recommender is really busy, is it okay? Well, that's a really interesting question. The schools absolutely, positively hate it. They condemn it in the strongest possible terms. What, and there was actually a really, really interesting discussion about that um, at the AGAC conference in Philadelphia this past year. It's, it's a really difficult problem. It definitely is not okay in terms of what the schools want. It's not okay also in terms of what the letter of recommendation is supposed to be doing. Realize the letter of recommendation is supposed to be providing another perspective on your work. And if you draft that letter for your recommender, then the letter of recommendation can't be doing, performing its job. So you, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a good, good idea um, from your perspective and it's not okay from the school's perspective. Tarun asks, and it's a good question, what should the essays be all about? All professional or some personal life struggles too, not related to management? I would try and include some of those personal life struggles. Um, good question, thank you. And by the way, all your questions have been good. Um, you have to be guided by the questions. But to the extent, if you've, if you've had some major life struggles that have been, that have shaped you, then Definitely, you know, you want to include them. The one thing, a couple of cautions here. Again, you have to be answering the question. Two, if the questions are asking you for, let's say, limiting you to the last three years, and I think MIT does that and Stanford might do that in some of its questions, then you want to honor that. You don't want to go back to childhood or teenage struggles. And third point is when you're talking about life struggles, you want to show that you've overcome whatever you struggled with. Um, you don't want to come across as damaged goods. You want to come off as somebody who's, who's stronger as a result of what you went through. Stronger, wiser, and better. Okay? Um, let's see. What else do we have here?
AJ asks a very good question. Is it okay to repeat some information from the resume and application sections in the essay? It's okay as long to provide context for your essays, but you can't only be doing that. I mean, I would assume that if you write in some of the, um, you know, the job history sections of the essays, especially those asking about your most significant experience or your most significant leadership experience, and then you know, you, you have maybe 300 characters or some crazy short amount of space. You may choose to write about that again in your essay. That I can, I can hear that. Then you want to be um, perhaps discussing some of the challenges you face there or interpersonal challenges, something that you didn't write about in the essay. Obviously, there'll be overlap. At the same time, you may choose to, in answering questions, focus on, on other things. So I, I'm almost positive that I, there would be some overlap, and that's, that's normal. Mansi asks, should your recommendations be in sync with essays and examples you have used, or can they represent your attributes in the big picture? Well, your recommendations should be written by someone else. Admittedly, you can advise them what to include, and you should. But I'm not quite sure I'm understanding the, the question here. Um, they should complement the essays. Again, you want complementariness throughout the application. Um, and they can use the same, it wouldn't shock me if a boss were to use the same a, a, examples that you highlight in your essays, as well as some different ones. That would be what I would anticipate. OK. Camille asks, how about if you're going through a life struggle at the time of your application? Can you state how you plan to overcome it or don't mention it at all? Uh, you know, that's an interesting question, but it also is one of those that, the, you know, there are so many different ways that people can be struggling. Um, it would really depend on, on what it is, and I can't, I can't give you a, a rule of thumb here. Um, Let's see what else do we have. Tarun asks, is it okay if I get an LOR from professional colleague, colleague, supervisor instead of from undergrad teacher? Absolutely. For business school, it's preferred. Okay, so definitely. And yeah, we anybody else want to pose a question here now? Was the um, material I provided clear? in terms of editing your essays. Actually, you know what I'd like? I'm wondering if with a show of hands you could just tell me how many of you are going to edit your, your applications or your essays differently as a result of the uh, webinar today. I'm curious. How many of you are going to edit your essays and use the three-fold approach? All right, not that many. So I guess I didn't convince that many of you. But okay. Any other questions? There was a question from somebody who left, and that is, how can we make a balance between giving specific examples and obeying the world limit? That's a very good question. Um, one is that you need to limit your examples. It used to be that you can give me you know, 500 to 750 words. You usually had room for two or three examples in an essay. Obviously, if you're now talking in terms of characters, you have far fewer, um, far less room for examples. So what you're going to have to do is limit them. Um, both, you're going to have to choose what you feel is the most powerful example, both in terms of impact that it's showing uh, perhaps in terms of mitigating a weakness in your background, and use use those. Also think about, again, your your essays are complementing your application, and in the application you are sometimes asked to write about why an achievement is significant in the short answer questions, so maybe in the essay you'll write about something else. 
It's another way to uh, maximize use of examples. That's a very good question. Kevin asks a really, really good question. Is there a significant advantage in applying round one versus round two? Should it matter? Or is it best just to apply once my application and essays are complete? Ooh, I like that question. And you're actually um, reminding me that um, I had meant to say, in some, of the, some cases, I had recommended that if you see problems with your essays, you may have to rewrite the essays. And some of you were probably thinking, well, what if that means I have to apply round two and I can't apply round one? Well, there is only a round one advantage, and I happen to be a big believer in this, if possible. There's only a round one advantage if you hold the quality of the application constant. If your round one application is inferior to your round two application, you're better off applying round two. Is that clear? So if you feel that your essays aren't ready when, the, you know, when it's time to hit submit, then don't submit them. If you feel your structure isn't right, your claim isn't clear, whatever, you didn't address all elements of the application, then wait. You have that, that luxury, especially at this point in time. My rule of thumb is provide in the earliest round possible, or submit rather in the earliest round possible, provided, and here's the big provided, and provided is in capital letters, that you don't compromise the quality of your application. Okay, I hope that answered the question. Linda, it's Miriam. I think we probably have time for just about one more question. Sam asked, well, writing a short note on career goals, say just 100 words, mentioning a particular company is good or mentioning a, a, a type of industry alone? I would, I would hesitate, unless you are going back to your current employer and know you have a position, I would not recommend saying, I want to work for company X. What you could say is, I want to work for a company like company X. That's fine. Um, and you can definitely say that, that uh, you want to work in the industry. Either way is okay, but I don't think you want to say, you know, I want to work for Disney or I want to work just for Google or I want to work just for Facebook or whatever the company happens to be. But it's fine to say I want to work for like, you know, social media, um, fast-growing company like Facebook. I want to work for an, you know, innovative company like Google or, you know, something along those lines. Marianne asks, if a former boss knew me personally previously before hiring, is it okay that's mentioned the LOR, or should he stick to talking about my experiences and qualities? I would think that he should stick to the personal, the, the professional rather, not the personal. And he should st stick to answering the questions and talking about your professional experience and qualities. Unless he, he knew you, let's say, in the context of a um, community service activity or some kind of extracurricular activity, where he can comment on, on knowing you. Uh, in both contexts, that's fine. If he knew you as a friend, um, then I would I would leave that out. Let's see. I think I'll take one more question. What do you think about recommendations coming from a friend who is a top MBA current student or alumni? This is from Vincent. Vincent, I would follow the instructions provided by the school for recommenders most of the time. They want professional recommendations from people who have supervised you. Occasionally, they will ask for a peer, um, and if they ask for a peer, then or you know, social friend, whatever, then that is acceptable. But if they don't ask for that, then they want professional recommendations. If, and if that top MBA current student was a former boss, that would be fine. All right. Once again, I want to thank you very, very much for coming today. I want to thank you for giving your time. I hope you found this useful. Good luck with your MBA applications. If you have additional questions that you'd like to explore, please feel free to visit our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash accepted. You can post your questions there. And also, please do visit the site. And let us know what you think of our new look. Um, I think you'll find resources much more easily now than you could on the old site, and there is a ton there. Take care. Good luck with your MBA applications. Thank you very much.